In the month of March, I um, well, no, background first of all, because there are people in here who never seen me heard me before. My name is Lloyd Dix. I am social artist in residence at the University of London Centre for Creative Collaboration. Um, that means that I, my definition of, of social art is creating beautiful things through the medium of human relationships. Um, and I do that playing with human relationships online and offline. I'm most interested in that bit where we do stuff online and offline, a bit like this. Um, this is like the 21st century of public art. Yeah, um, yes. Yeah, I mean, I know, I'm just, yes, but it is. Like quite very precise. But, but it's a bit more meta than that because it yes. is saying, it's, it's not saying there's this, there's this thing, the art, that we're going to mediate through online or social media. Yeah. It's the actual, there is, there is beauty itself in our interactions. Uh, and those interactions that happen online and offline and the ones that are mediated by both. So, um, I'm trying desperately to find my map of my trip across the state. Yeah. So, um, so, in March, I did this project called Please Look After This Englishman. Um, basically, it was a coast-to-coast trip across the USA. I started in uh, San Francisco on the 1st of March. I had in my pocket a ticket from New York back to London on the 31st of March. Um, and I had my online social network to help me get from where I was, standing on the edge of this enormous continent with infinite choice in front of me to help me sort out how I might find my way from one end to the other. Um, so, um, so essentially, what I was doing was I was saying um, I was in I, I'm in I'm in San Francisco. First stop, I want to get to. Um, first stop, I want to get to Austin, Texas, for, for, for the South by South. I'm here, I don't know how to get there, I don't drive, by the way, that's a little bit of a restraint on everything. Um, I want interesting people to go and stay with on the way there. What's the best way I can go? Um, and basically I wrote, I wrote a blog post and I said all of that, and I said, and I'm going to bed now, and in the morning I want some information to help me make a decision about what I'm going to go. And I'm going to make my decision based on the English. So I'm, in, I'm not sure how good your, your geography of the United States is, but <coughs> San Francisco's... You, this is back to front, I'm doing it my, my way. I'll do, I'll do it for you, okay? This is the West Coast. Uh, San Francisco's there, about halfway down. Austin, Texas is in the southwest. So that looks like a pretty good way to do it. What I said in my blog post was, you know, I can imagine going down to LA and then across the desert somehow, there's a train that goes that way. Um, I can imagine, and, and by the way, there's lots of stuff going on in LA, I know people in LA, so maybe I could go that way. Or maybe I could go straight across to Salt Lake City and Denver and then drop down. Or maybe there's some of the things that you can think of for me. And, um, and I, will, I will do what you tell me to do. And um, so I woke up in the morning and I had two messages in my notebooks. One of them was from, remember, this is where we are. One of them was from a friend of mine, Tracy, who lives in Milwaukee. Uh, and another was from a, an ex girlfriend of mine, uh, who now still lives in London, um, who said, I've got three friends that I trust you with in the United States. Um, two of them are on the right over on the east coast, one of them is in Seattle. And so I'm San Francisco, well, Silicon Valley, Seattle, Milwaukee, Austin, Texas. So that's the way that I went. <laughs> um, I, um, I bought a rail pass 
Uh, Amtrak do a rail pass uh, that allows you to do, well, they, they do several, but the one that I bought um, allows you within 30 days to do 12 segments um, for 575 days. Uh, and the segment is something like, could be something like San Francisco to Seattle. Um, that journey is, uh, don't worry about the visuals, they're not working because the internet is shit and I hate it. But I love you and so I want you to come in. You just love it, we didn't get that. No, you get that at the end. I also, I'm also very, very keen on the fact that we've brought in a laptop cover with a monkey on it and a banana. I want to see that monkey. <laughs> um, so, where was I? Ah yes, San Jose. I got a train from San Jose up to Seattle, that's 24 hours. Um, stayed overnight with um, these friends Anne and Kev, who were friends of my ex-girlfriend Jo, um, who had never heard of me until two days before. Um, and um, hung out with them on through Sunday morning. Had a sauna in their basement, which was fantastic. Um, went out and had lunch, brunch and you know, wandered around Seattle. And then they put me on a train from Seattle over across to Milwaukee. That's 24 hours. That's 43 hours on the train. That's that's longer than it, it feels longer than it sounds. I mean, it sounds a long time, but it really is. It really is a long time, especially because. The way it gets chunked up, you kind of got um, uh, Sunday afternoon, Sunday afternoon and evening in going through Washington State. Once you get once you get into the on the Monday, that that whole day is going through Montana and North Dakota. And when you wake up in the morning in Montana, it's beautiful mountains and streams and all that kind of stuff, and then very very quickly it becomes completely flat. And all the way through, Montana and North Dakota is completely flat. It's like it's like driving around in circles in the fens. It, it's it's you know it, it's just there is nothing there. And especially in well yeah. and especially in March, it's covered in snow, so it's white. Um, so and there's no mobile phone signal. So I'm you know me I'm a little Twitter whore. I can't keep off. All of that, um, but I had to because there was, there was nothing else for me to do. So I get across to Milwaukee. I had a bizarre evening in Milwaukee because it was Mardi Gras, um, and I ended up going to a Mardi Gras party in a Lutheran church. The whole big story, it's all on the blog, it will all be in the book, it will be in the TV series. Um, <laughs> And um, yeah, then got on a train from Milwaukee, a little train from Milwaukee down to Chicago and it took two hours. It's like London to Birmingham, it's, it's, you know, it's nothing. Uh, and then a 29 hour journey from Chicago down to Chicago. That's awesome. So that, that's how, that's kind of how it worked. It was, it was not a journey that was about me saying, um, I want to go to lots of cool places. Um, and tell me which cool restaurants to go to and which, which hot boutique hotel should I stay in. It was, where are there some cool and interesting people on the way to the, thing, the other thing, some more cool and interesting people, um, and how many cool and interesting people can I find, meet, stay with, talk to, learn from, write about, tell stories about. Um, and, you know, the, 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 the shortened story is from Austin, I went across to Lafayette in Louisiana, had a weird night in southern Louisiana like you do, hopped across to New Orleans, up to Chicago, across to Washington DC, up to Maine, where I stayed with my friend Nick, who's got a farm, we made cheese, we tapped maple trees for syrup, um, we, um, <clears throat> he threatened to kill a pig, um, Really to a, like a pig, not a policeman. You know, <laughs> a a, a um, Yeah, yeah. He keeps yeah, pigs. He keeps <laughs> pigs and he kills them to eat, not a bug. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, he, what he actually does.
does is he uh, is he runs a workshop for people. He lives up in this far <coughs> He's he's found that there is a, an audience for a workshop, mostly kind of bored housewives in New York and, mm -hmm. and Rhode Island, who come up to the farm and watch him slaughtering a pig and then turning it into bacon and sausages. He has this kind of charcuterie workshop for folk who come and stay on the farm. But chicken. Sorry? But chicken. Am I right? It is. I think he, I think he can cause a pork cap. He can cause a charcuterie cap. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That's, that's him monetizing social media. He gets rich people to pay a large amount of money to come, see, come to his hands and watch him kill do, make, Watch him do his job, basically. Um, <laughs> so then, so then I came back down and got, went to New York and, and, and came back. Obviously, I came back because I needed that. So, so what was the what was the what was the purpose of all of that? Um, it was. Essentially, to understand what I mean, I've just been in this session on evaluating social media and what's, you know, and, and what's, what's the effect of this. And for me, what I'm trying to uncover with all of this and telling some of the stories from it is is to say, well, what's the what is the value of my online social network? Well, one of the values of my online social network is that it allows me to do cool shit. It allows me to go and meet interesting people. And talk to them and stay with them uh, and do things that I probably could have done otherwise, but not in the exact way that I ended up doing. So anybody can do this stuff. It's not, you know, it's not like a startling thing to go travelling across the United States and not have any money for hotels and all that kind of stuff. What is what is different about it is, that, and anybody could do this by. Um, signing up on couch surfing and saying, I want to go here, 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 and here, and I'd like to find some places. What's, what is interesting to me about this is that this was entirely sort of within my existing social network. Um, and that essentially what I've created simply by writing on the internet and talking to people and tweeting holding these conversations is created a safety net for myself so that when I stand there in San Francisco and have the entire continent in front of me and have kind of infinite choice about where I might go uh, and none of the normal props, I have a way of moving forward and, and, um, and getting to my destination. And then there's a whole bunch of, of kind of metaphorical stuff about what does this, you know, what does this journey tell you about the state of who we are and what we do and, and how we interact with each other and what we what we'll do for each other in in certain circumstances and what you know how does it map onto all sorts of other um, situations? There are all sorts of there are all sorts of um, kind of analogous situations where you're effectively standing on the edge of a large territory with a large number of possible choices in front of you uh, and not sure about which way to go and it would be great to have something that you could trust to carry you through the decision making, a simple decision making process to get from here to the other side, to get from here to the end of your project, to get from where you are to where you want to go. So, The other thing that I think is interesting about it is it's it's about creating a, it's about creating uh, some sort of artifact that is at one level it's a performance so it was something that you could watch as it went, as it as it went on um, but then it becomes a set of stories that you can read and interact with it's become a it's become a show that I can. Do to become a series of talks that I can do. Uh, obviously, it then also can become all sorts of other artifacts that people can interact with in other ways. But these artifacts are not just about, it's not just about me 
being an author, going out and doing some research and then writing it all up. It is about us as a network uh, co-creating a piece of work. It's co-creating performance, co-creating the stories, because I have a story and I wish I could show it, but I can't. Um, which, which basically goes like this um, on the map, you know, all of that. Now, so I'm, I'm going along, Tracy in Milwaukee's life was coming along like this. And at one point, at some point in time, we went like this. Now, I'm interested, I, obviously I can tell you this story very well, and over and over again, uh, nausea, and I will. But I'm also interested in what Tracy's story was beforehand, and what it, what it, how, what it became as, as we, we came to intersect, and what happened afterwards as well. And that's not something we normally do and talk about and think about. It's like we just kind of say, we just kind of take this one linear view. So one of the things I'm interested in exploring more is collecting the stories of those people whose life I barge through. How do you find your social network evolve as, you, as you're almost going across, as you're going across this journey mm -hmm. and you're being put into contact with people you didn't know and then like, they become part of your network? Yeah. Did you find that then they were then, you know, their network then became part of your network, if that makes sense? So, once as you were taking each step, it was evolving in yeah. A couple of things. One is, yes, in a way, in that I had this, I had my friend Joe, who I have very little to do with normally. I mean, I, poor girl, went out with me in college 25 years ago. Um, yikes. Um, I just say that because I just like to prove to people that I did have girlfriend once. Um, <laughs> um, no, um, so she she provided me with two places to stay. Now I had no idea that that was going to happen at all. I mean, I, I, I kind of assumed that everybody I was going to stay with was going to be people that I was on Twitter with every day. But it wasn't. It was a real mix of people I'm on Twitter with every day, people whose blogs I read and. We've kind of interacted through that. Uh, a couple of people who I knew through Seismic, when Seismic was a video platform, very strong links there. But there were also these two people in Washington and Seattle who were a distant, not very distant uh, links, but links from, a, from somebody who I didn't know as well. And I found the edge of my network when I was in Austin trying to get to Lafayette. Um, and it, so this, this was again all about girl. So there's a girl in Lafayette, show your ears, folks, um, and don't want to be blushing. So there's a girl in Lafayette who, you know, we decided we were going to meet. <laughs> and, um, and, yeah, thank you. <laughs> There's nothing to be ashamed of. <laughs> and I'm in Austin, and um, as long as she's not watching, it'll be fine. Um, not yet, she's not. <laughs> but, but Twitter isn't working. No. So uh, I'll tell the I'll tell the really really um, very thin version of the story. Um, so for one reason or another, it turned out that it was probably wasn't a very good idea for me to turn up in this small town in. Somebody there who was not keen on me being there, uh, and I didn't want to be on Jerry Springer. Basically. <laughs> um, so when I was in Austin, I was thinking, well, I, I, I want to get, I want to get from Austin. I need to get to New Orleans because I've already arranged to meet up with a guy there. There was this potential stop off in between, so I started asking how I could get straight from. Austin to New Orleans, um, and people people put me in touch with other people because obviously I'm in Austin, a South by Southwest. For those of you who don't know, it's like thousands and thousands of geeks. Surely a hefty percentage of those are going to be people who came from New Orleans and they'll be driving back, and so maybe I can get a lift. And people put me in touch with loads and loads of people, and I would tweet them. I you know, lots of people gave me phone numbers and I rang them and all of them said, no, I don't know who you are. I don't, I, you, I, don't, I don't follow you. I, I'm not sure I follow the person who's giving you my telephone number. Who was it again? 
it was it was quite bizarre. It's a really unexpected situation for me because I'm normally like, hey, hi, I'm you know who I am. Um, you know we've got this. You know that, that my social capital is quite liquid. Suddenly, I found a place where it wasn't, and there were people who just couldn't be bothered with it. Just were not. Just were not that interested in having a stranger in their car from Austin to New Orleans. Especially one who just found their seems seem to have found their number on the internet. So it was it was not as expected and I found the edge. What did you do? I ended up getting a, I ended up getting a train. The girl in Lafayette uh, decided to book a hotel room. And um, I stayed in the hotel room and didn't have to go to the small town. Um, and then she drove me across from Lafayette to New York. Um, it, all, it all worked, it all, the whole thing worked out much more simply all the time than I thought. I mean, this is the, this is the thing that all the time I'm thinking, that's too complicated, that's going to be so difficult, we have to ask all these people, and, 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 and it's going to be, and it wasn't. Just most of the time, it was extremely fluid, and uh, I was not worried at all. At least that's what I tell myself now. So, so that's what I did in March. In July, i.e., uh, kind of two weeks time, <laughs> I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to do it in this country. Uh, maybe somewhere in the, uh, else in the EDU, I don't, I don't mind really. But what I'm going to do differently with this is A, I am not, um, I'm not, I don't have a geographical destination that I'm heading to because for those of you who came in late, the American trip was about getting from San Francisco to New York within a time period. With this, I am, I, I'm coming to the end of my lease on my flat anyway, so, I'm, so rather than getting somewhere new, I'm saying, okay, I'm going to use this safety net that I've, I've constructed um, and I'm going to traverse that net. Um, as, I mean it says on the, on the board, get on your bike and look for work 2.0. Um, we're also talking about is Hobo 2.0, talking about what, how, how do you be, how, how can you be migratory knowledge worker? Um, how can you go off and find, because this, this isn't about a holiday, this is about going and, and finding some work. It's not about finding work, it's about, it's about doing work while I'm out on the road. So, um, essentially what I'm saying to people is, I could come to your town and do some cool shit. If you've got cool shit to do that looks like it's got a void shaped hole in it. Um, and, and, and you have some cash. Because <laughs> that's the way I work. I don't know about you guys, but I like to I like to work for money. Call me old fashioned. Um, so so that's what I'm doing. I'm starting off. Um, yeah. So I hand my keys in on the 29th. Uh, I'm heading up to Glasgow on the 30th um, for and I'm, we're doing a kind of open house um, at Martin Clark's house, which is going to be kind of music and cooking and storytelling and whatever else crazy Glaswegian stuff goes down. Probably some drinking, do you think? Hey, I don't know. I've never been to Glasgow. Um, so I'm, I'm doing that um, through till the 3rd of July and then, then, then I've got an open slot. Um, at the moment, I don't know where I'm going to stay the night of the 3rd of July. Or anywhere after that. At all, actually. But, but I've kind of put, myself, I've put, I've put a kind of boundary around it and said I'm going to do, it, do this for three months and then review it after two months to see whether I really do want to do three months. Um, and, which is the coda to all of my projects, and see what happens. And obviously, why should I talk about it as we go? And 
and the, the mechanism for finding new stuff is, I suppose, I suppose this is part of it, but um, it is, is talking to me on Twitter and talking to me on Twitter. So I will be writing about what I do, what I'm doing, but also then talking about the kinds of things that I might do next. So that's, that's it. Questions? Tittering? What kind of work are you looking for? I'm looking for any kind of work. Any kind of work. The kind of work that I do tends to fall into facilitation and um, helping people run events, um, helping people work together more effectively. Um, but I'm a performer too, so I play ukulele and I sing. Um, I do, as you know. So, mm -hmm. On the, on the thing. Um, um, so I'm, I'll do house gigs. I have a, I have a, a, um, a kind of one-man show about the American trip that I, that I do. Um, I, you know, I know about this stuff. So I don't know. What would you, Dave? What would you want me to do? Oh well, uh, obviously. My laundry, that kind of yes. Thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm no. I'm all laundry, I'll put, put turn a pepperoni on pizza for you. Yeah. Mm, whatever. Perfect. All of those things. Uh, no. All of my well, Lloyd is a. Should you, what, shall I sell you? you Lloyd's not sell me, man. Lloyd is a master <laughs> online community. Well, any kind of community builder, really. I think. He understands all that stuff very, very well. So if you're running any kind of online thing where you want people to join in and get involved and that kind of stuff, Lloyd's very good at that. We mentioned Tuttle. I haven't mentioned Tuttle, no. You did that, that was good. I run the Tuttle Club, which has then kind of been copied and morphed and mutated into various social media cafes around the country. So, anywhere where nerdy people sit around and drink coffee and talk, I claim that. <laughs> <laughs> so, the social media cafe, cafe that's happening next Friday in Birmingham. Yes, it's got from you. Indeed. Via Pete Ashton and Joanna Geary and Chris Eunice and Nancy Garrett. Yeah. It's got that one. Interesting. My DNA. Interesting to see it on a family tree. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Where it can be. Uh, yeah. Where it can be served. There are some bits. There are some bits where it's just kind of popped up and somebody said, "Ooh, that's like a little bit," because they've seen it. Because they've seen it. Somebody started to try a start a tuttle in Leeds, which mm. crashed and bombed. Yeah. Because that person had no social capital in Leeds. And he said, Who are you? Yeah. Who are you? And who are you to try and drag us along to something that you know? Sure. Yeah. Uh, that's and, and it's and yes. it's and it's gone in all sorts of different directions. So the, the, there's, there's what we do on on Friday mornings in London, there's what happens here every month in, on Friday, but but the Manchester one is a I was going to say, I mean, we, um, the Manchester one, we've been doing it for over two years. So mm -hmm. The Leeds yeah. one was a bit errant, I think. It's weird. Yeah. It was a bit of a weirdo. Yes, so. Wait, were you, what about the time frame for the kind of jobs that you'll do? Were you just be looking for yeah, a one-off gig type thing, or I'm were you talking to about two to three months total? Talk, yeah, two to three months total, so I'm, I'm not looking for a six-month gig. I'm not, I don't, I don't think at the moment that I'm looking for something that would be six weeks to six to eight weeks. I think that would be, that feels like something too big. Because I'm looking for things that, <clears throat> where I'm, what, what I'm, the, the fantasy I have, other people would call it a plan, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm honest and I know that it's just a fantasy, is that there are people around the country who I could do valuable work with, uh, but it's not quite valuable enough for us to, for, for me to come and work with them while I'm holding on to an overhead of a flat in London or all those kind of things. Yeah? So it's stuff that is valuable but not quite valuable enough for that, but it's valuable enough for, for us to do this stuff together if I can just come and sit with you and sit on yourself. Is it, will you be looking for the, for the jobs or what is, are people going to be saying, well, can you come and do these things soon? Or is it just no, I would imagine. Yeah. I'm, I'm open to, I'm open to suggestions. <coughs> Completely. So, yeah, that's, that's how.
own role. Is, um, I just, you know, don't know. President, have you got things, anything planned at all so far? I have, um, I have a conference I'm speaking at in Sheffield on the 13th of July. Well, no, no. No, I have, like I say, 3rd of July. I'm not looking for so much care. What about doing something that you could take to all the places you go to? Indeed. <laughs> um, like. No. Okay. Mm. Um, well, well, I yeah. To yeah. a certain extent, I've got I've got the show. I've got me. I've got me and my uke. I've got um, you know me and my writing hand. That's kind of what I'm taking. I mean, what I what I intend to do is document, but also link up people that I meet along the way, because I'm not assuming that the people that I meet along the way are already going to be connected with each other. I think something I can do that is valuable is say, Gee, you think you're doing something you need here, actually you're doing something that they're also doing, but I've just been talking to something that's impressive. So you, when you started, one of the first things you said was it's social art. Yeah. I'm kind of curious about the art elements. Okay. Really. And the first thing I thought of when I saw this was Richard Long straight away. Yeah, yeah. Obvious reasons. Sure. And I was wondering what, where, because what you've been pitching so well, it was kind of like a pitch for, you know, helping you evolve this mm -hmm. idea, which is great. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, that's um, part of it, yeah. Uh, but in, in the context of, because you, you, you put it in the context of art, mm -hmm. what do you, what do you, how do you relate back to that context? I'm, well, very, I'm interested. So yeah, sure. But, well, uh, as I say, it, it's a performance. Sure. <coughs> yes. So you're taking part in it right now. Yes. Um, now, your perception of whether that is something valuable or beautiful or not is is yours to make. Yes, of course. Um, but that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the sum of the interactions over over a period of time. Over and some of those, and time. some of those, some of those, yeah, because it started already, yeah, okay. and it will finish. When it fin when it's finished, I will say it's over. Yeah. Now, some of those will get captured. Some of those will get turned into. You know, I mean, captured is a horrible word, but you know, some of them will get written down. Some of them, some of them will, will be recorded. photographed. They'll be recorded. Record it. They'll be. They'll. There will be something that you can look at afterwards and say that captures something of the essence of this thing, but there will always be stuff that is actually just about our connection. Uh, and, it, watch, it, and what you do with it when you go home. Because it's the problem, the, I guess the issue I have is, is that it, it isn't what you're describing just like living. Isn't that, isn't that what <laughs> yeah, you're yeah, yeah. But it's, it's, it's demonstrating the way of life. Yeah. Uh, for people, possible in, this in, in a public in a public way, yeah. for people to think about their own lives, yeah. it's it's presenting it's presenting something and demonstrating something. In particular, kind of faith in in one's online social network, if you like, that I think is useful to other people. In some ways, it's almost a psychogeography project mm -hmm. where. You you're being so affected can... by your environment, and mm. your environment is moving you around. But instead of the environment being a built environment, it's your social environment. So the, I mean, um, I also think of it a bit like some of those postal art projects, except that I'm, I'm the thing that is being posted around, and I have some, you know, I'm an intelligent. In all of this, I'm not. I'm not just a package that is being picked up and put from place to place. I'm also somebody who can make intelligent, intelligent-ish decisions about what I, what I do next, or where I go next, and whether I, whether I go into certain situations. Because there, there, there has to be a basic level of self-care in all this. I'm not just saying you can put me in any situation. And, this is not. This is not torture. <laughs> 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 it's not that. Kind of, I'm not into that kind of performance. I'm, I'm much more into the, the, the kind of 
kind of thing that's comfy. <laughs> you don't want to basically pass out, basically. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask you that. How do you, how do you kind of ensure your personal security and safety? I mean, what sort of measures do you take? Or uh, do you only, you know, is things going to be verified by two people that you know or something like that? I, I am keeping it as much as possible to people that I already know. Yeah. I mean, that's that's why I'm I'm not um, um, why I'm not kind of just doing this is not couch surfing. Um, it's doing it through a network that already exists at least partially, and it may maybe that I find extensions to that network. Um, but I know that I can use the network to test our new potential connections. Um, it's about demonstrating that as well, because um, I have no desire to, to be hurt or uncomfortable. Can I widen the discussion out a little bit? Yes. I, I think I had the experience of something like this when I did the Twiki, the live Twiki broadcast, mm -hmm. which was quite unexpected because I was just going to do that with one or two other people, and then all of a sudden other people liked the idea and started piling into it. I think that was, you know, sort of cashing in the social capital really. People would given their time and resources for free because mm -hmm. they liked the idea and were prepared to support me in what I was doing. Um, I just think, given this is a local gov camp, yes. the how social capital applies to local government. Thank you for bringing that to what I <laughs> intended to talk about, yeah, but I got right. carried away with my own but, yeah, Personally, I think that the, the local government was probably the first expression of social capital, mm -hmm. but it's become institutionalised and sort of forgotten mm -hmm. those roots. Mm -hmm. And how does local government build and capitalize on social capital. Yeah. So, well, two things. I mean, I think there's probably lots of wisdom in the room, more than in my game. But I'm very interested in how we create the, the new institutions that we, we need. We don't worry about reforming old institutions, but maybe there's some of that. But I think it's more likely that we will camp out in existing institutions and then when they collapse, be ready to pick them up again. Um, but yeah, the, the rest of your question, I don't know. The other guys, who else? <laughs> well, social capital in local government. The, 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 I, think the, I think the big thing that I've come away from in, in all of this is recognizing that it's something I'm trying to write about at the moment about. Organisations in general, the form of organisation that we've, we've got are all kind of cyborgs. They're part machine, yeah. they're part human, mm -hmm. and the machine bit is still more dominant than we would like it to be. I interviewed somebody earlier on who said that the world is not ready for local government as a collection of individuals with differing opinions, and that's the problem with local government using social media. Um, you know, I think that's where we need to be because people connect with people, like institutions. Yeah. Also, somebody, I think it's Carl from Derbyshire said this morning that one of the biggest complaints they get is about gritting. They gave one of their gritting drivers a flip cam. He went out and filmed his journey, edited it, and stuck it on YouTube. And, you know, and the comments they got were, "Oh, well, this is fantastic! Now we know what your gritters do, aren't they? Wonderful people!" You know, and it completely changed people's perception of the service because they could interact with the person who was delivering. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and change is about people, it's not about technology, it's about people first, it's about engagement and conversations between people. And social media is a first call, a port of call for mm -hmm. other people and they're engaging on that conversation and then becomes face to face. So that's, that's what I take out of the internet, it's always. Because in the past, it seems public services have tried in a way to break down the social capital, try to stop bonds being created by public services and systems. So if you look at um, the way we try to reform public services, so lots of targets, it's quite a mechanistic way. It's not about the human re relationships between um, those two sides. So if you look at kind of the professionalization of lots of different, like the medical industry, so you're, you're meant to be quite um, kind of, well, you're not meant to get involved in some of these kind of problem. It's meant to be quite a, a distinct relationship and um, you've got, I guess, that 
professional knowledge over somebody else. It's not about the relationship, it's about doing something to somebody. If you look at some of that patient opinion, yeah. so it's a generalization, but I reckon most of the complaints on patient opinion are about the institution. Most of the praise is about an individual who did something wrong. Mm -hmm. yeah. In Birmingham City Council, um, we, until recently, had uh, Seems to be to, to build up social capital in the area. In Highgate, right next to Digworth, um, there's a guy called Danny Shepherd, and um, he, he did really well. And he just had this, this human face uh, between the council and, and the residents of Highgate, who, who don't get much from the council at all, seemingly. Um, and, and he did really well at kind of connecting people and letting people know what they could access and, and how they could do, and, and why like various funds or help or support might be. And just kind of bringing people together and making sure stuff got done. So when we wanted to arrange a Highgate Fun Day, um, just a fun day in the park in Highgate, which is hardly used at all, um, he sorted out all of the, the kind of bureaucratic logistics about the health and safety and stuff. And, and it, that, that fun day wouldn't have happened without him. It was probably the day in the sun where we got together and just had a fun day. Um, it hadn't happened for God knows how long. Um, and, then, and then the funding went out. And, for the neighbourhood managers and, and those cuts were made and, and the neighbourhood managers have gone there, which is really sad. And yes, you know, he, he built up such, he was so well loved and, and felt to be needed that we actually presented a petition to the council to keep Andy on, but it wasn't to be, he's gone elsewhere. But something mm -hmm. is left behind, so there's yeah. something left behind the conditions that he facilitated. Yeah, definitely. And he was. One of the common things people say to me at social media surgeries when we a voluntary organisation come for advice is, oh, my work isn't very interesting, people don't want to know about it. And I say, you've got client journeys, volunteer journeys, they're stories. Tell the stories, that's what interests people. It's a classic, you know, it's a classic thing in, in you know, networking or brand strategy or whatever. You have 30 seconds to talk, to introduce what you do as a story. Give us one example of something amazing that you've done or a person you've helped. That, that is far more powerful tool to marketing on the level of priority does. Um, you know, most of the things they try and do, I think, you know, those, those case studies of how people they help or things that they do are very powerful. Absolutely. Um, thank you. 
Are we getting back together for a plenary? No, I think it's just literally beer o'clock. Beer o'clock. Beer. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.